equations worksheet here, the thing that I want you to know is that there's really, there's really only three different ways to solve, right? There's like v, v equals like 10 over 3. When the unknown is over there on the left, you just divide, right? When you've got something like 2.5 equals 12 over t. How do you solve that? Well, I mean, the long, the mathematical proof way would be to show multiply both sides by t. That disappears. 2.5t is equal to 12. Divide both sides by t. Cancel. Sorry, don't do that. Divide by 2.5. That's what I was trying to say, right? 2.5t is equal to 12. Divide both sides by 2.5 t equals 12 divided by 2. That's sort of the law of mathematical proof. What I recommend you just think about is 2.5 equals 12 over t. If you take a divide by to the other side, it comes out. So the students with the last name t to z, please go to the law sheet for your pictures. 2.5 is equal to 12 over t. Oh, one, two. Different colors, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, so if you have something like this, right, the T and the 2.5, just do what? You walk on. All right, so I would expect you guys to be able to solve that nice and easy. I would expect you to be able to solve the other kind where you've got something like. Um, Two point five is equal to d over four point one. D equals four point one times two point five. Like that should be like you should be able to handle that without even like having to think. You just know what to do. If you don't aren't at that stage yet, you need to come see me. We need to get that because I can't spend a whole lot of time with the whole class solve a little math things like that. Okay, that, that, that's like a whole grade. I hate to say it if you don't know how to do it, but it's about grade eight math. Okay. So you have to be able to do it. It has to be automatic. No, I don't know how to do this kind of stuff, right? Here's the answers real quick, right? First one is what? Four. Number one is four. Number two is 7.3. Number three is 58.1. Number four is 189.87. You need to be able to handle scientific notation. Number five is five, number six is 8.0, number seven is 19.4, number eight is 8.6 times 10 to the minus two. Flip it over, number nine is 24, I think there's two that are the same, aren't they? 10 is 722.5, 11 is the same as that, my apologies. And number 12 is 9.2 times 10 to the minus three. Okay? Please don't be embarrassed. You have to be able to do this. If you can't do it, come and see me. Okay? I'm not going to yell at you. I won't be disappointed. Okay? I'll get you up to speed. But you have to come and see me. All right. One last thing that we have to sort of cover before I get on to new stuff. This one here, position time graphs. The one that says position time graphs, draw position time graph for the following situation. Remember this one? It was tacked on to the end of a uh, end of a booklet. Yeah, that's the one I didn't hear. Tacked on there. Oh, it's tacked on to it's the page two of the one that says motion detector graphs. Okay, find the booklet that says motion detector graphs. You may or may not have that. Okay, back there, and tell bottom left hand corner. Okay, so this says motion detector graphs, and the, and the first uh, thing is um, a ball is thrown up into the air. That's the one I'm looking for. All right, does everybody have the sheet and knows which one I'm talking about here? So draw a position time graph for the following situation. A ball is thrown up into the air, it lands on the ground at your feet. Ten seconds later, position is measured in the vertical plane. So what I'm saying there is I'm measuring the height. I'm measuring the height. That's what the vertical plane means, up and down. So the ball is sort of in the air. It lands on your feet 10 seconds later. So first of all, I guess you could label it from 0 to 10. It's in my hand, approximately waist-high half. 
I throw it up into the air, and it lands at my feet. So how high is it to start with? Okay, five feet, four and a half feet, something like that, maybe a meter and a half if you're talking meters. It's somewhere like up here, right? And as I throw it up, it goes higher and higher and higher, and then it comes back down. So what's it going to look like? Is that what you have? Something like that? This would be zero. This would be about 1.5. If you didn't have 1.5, that's fine. It's the shape of this that I'm concerned about. Okay? As it goes up, where does it reach its peak? Right there. Now, you might say, Mr. Bennett, this one looks to me like the ball has landed way like over there. And you said it landed at your feet. Which is the position? This is the height here, right? The vertical. This is time. This is time. Okay, so it's not showing, it's going out to the in front of it. Now that's number one. Number two, what if position were measured in the above example in the horizontal plane? In other words, I didn't care how high it was, I only cared about how far away it was from me. Well, once again, it's happening over 10 seconds. As I throw, how far away, if, what would I use for my reference frame, my origin? Would I use me? Would I use my hand? What would I use? Remember, we're measuring not vertical displacement. We're, me we're talking about horizontal displacement. We're talking about left to right. So I have to use me or the door or my hand or the bookshelf over there as the origin, right? Which one makes the most sense? Matthew. Probably me. Second might, might be the hand. Either one, right? If I use me, then how far away is the ball out here in my hand? A little under a meter, right? So it would be, now what happens? When I throw the ball up and it comes down, what happens to the distance away from me? It stays the same. So what's the graph look like, Joey? You mean a flat line? Can you say that with confidence? That's what it would look like. It'd be a flat line. It would be a flat line. Okay? Because I'm measuring... How far away it is, if I use this roll of tape as my substitute, right? How far away is it? We'll say 0.8. I throw it up in the air, it's 0.8, it's 0.8, it's 0.8, it's 0.8. It's only 0.8 meters away from me the entire time. Right? It never goes anywhere sideways. That's a hard question. Don't worry if you got it wrong. Let's look at number three. A man walks for eight minutes from his home on Main Street North to the Royal Bank. He spends two minutes out at the ATM and then returns home. Okay, so how much time elapses altogether? Well, he's walking for eight minutes. He spends two minutes at the ATM and then he returns home. We can only assume that he takes another eight minutes. So the whole trip then is going to be 18 minutes. Now, frame of reference wise, if you're on Main Street North and you're walking towards the Royal Bank, what direction are you headed? If you're on Main Street, oh, you're in north, like the library, home hardware area. You're walking south. Is south positive or is it negative? Am I going to need a negative position up here? Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Okay, so what's going to be my frame of reference? Peyton, what's going to be my frame of reference? His house or the Royal Bank? Really up to you, right? We want to go with this house? Yeah. Go with this house? That's zero. He's walking south. When he walks south, what does his position become then? Negative. Does he walk at a, at a constant speed? Yes. Yeah, likely. So we're going to walk at a constant speed towards the World Bank for a total of eight minutes. Kind of slow. He spends two minutes standing there getting his money out. Flat. And then does what? He walks back. Now this is if you use his house as your frame of reference. What if you use the World Bank as your frame of reference? I'll just do it in red on here. Yeah. Would it be opposite? If he's north of the frame of reference, then he actually starts where? He starts positive up here, walks towards it, spends two minutes, and then walks well, back. You'll notice that the shape is exactly the same, it's just that it's above instead of below. That's all.
Does that make sense? I feel like I'm rushing you. Am I rushing you? Can you go over the second part again, how it would be different? Okay, well, if the origin is the Royal Bank, right, where does he start? How do you really need to watch? Okay? Like, so, all right, so I'm at the Royal Bank. That's my zero. Where do I start? I start in a, I'm at my house. I'm eight, I'm in eight minutes, whatever, maybe, you know, 400 meters away. Right? I'm at a positive, and I walk, over time, I walk towards the bank. This is my bank here at zero. I spend two minutes there, and then I return home. Okay? Let's look at number four. A bowling ball spends eight minutes in the rack waiting to be thrown. It takes four seconds for the ball to reach the tin, then 20 seconds to return to the rack. Similar kind of concept here, right? It's sitting there in the rack, it takes 20 sec four seconds for the ball to reach the pins, and then 20 seconds back. So it goes there, then it comes back. Kind of like the guy going to the bank and back. Which is my frame of reference? Is it the pins or is it the rack? Well, let's do both. There's one. There's the second one. If my frame of reference is the rack, where does the ball start? It sits there on the rack, right? And the fact it spends eight minutes there. So it's just hanging out, sitting there on the rack. This is all nice and flat, right? And then you throw it, and what happens? It goes way down there really fast, right? So what kind of shape is it going to be? It's going to be like almost straight up, right? It's so fast. And then it takes a little bit longer to come back. What does that look like? Less steep, right? And then it sits there on the rack again. And my, my scale here is probably pretty poor. Okay? What if the pins, what if the pins were your frame of reference? Where is it starting? Well, we haven't agreed on whether if I'm standing here at the start of the lane, the pins are down there. Am I positive of the pins or am I negative of the pins? I don't know. No, we haven't got a convention for bowling ball frame of reference, really, do we? Okay? So, I don't know. I'm going to say I start positive. Right? And I sit there and I wait and I wait and I wait and I wait and I wait. And then I go quickly to the pins and then return. That would be one way to look at it. There's kind of multiple answers here, aren't there? Okay? This is kind of the flip version of that one, right? If I said it was negative, then I guess it would be be negative, 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 straight to the pins, and then something like that, right? Yeah, that's how the graph ran, though. Like, yeah. the graph Excuse the interruption. This is the first last call for anyone who has not had their picture taken to please go down to the MLT now. And that includes all students who do not want a package. They still need to have their picture taken for the yearbook and for your student card. Okay, last one. A girl leaves her locker by the office and starts to walk to the gym. She walks 15 meters before realizing she forgot her gym clothes. She returns to her locker, gets the clothes, proceeds to the gym. What's the frame of reference? Locker. Okay, so we'll start at the locker. Is walking to the gym positive or negative? Up to you. Like, yeah, I know these are hard. Right? We'll say it's positive. She's walking positively to the gym, probably at a constant velocity. She walks 15 meters before she realizes she forgot her gym clothes. 15 meters. So she has to do what? Turn back, go back to her locker, probably take a few seconds to get them out, and then do what? Proceed back to the gym. You might even say, oh, she runs because she's late. How come I went farther here? Because she, she goes past where she was before, right? Okay. These are hard. I get that. It's very vague. I need to probably sort of take the questions and clarify them. You guys do that. Did I, did I finish this one, the crash cart one? I think I did. Well, real quick, I'm going on. You guys should use lunch time for that. Okay, I think, I think I'm going to go on. Are we all sort of caught up? Is there anything I need to cover that I haven't talked about? That I've, Have I cleaned everything up that's sort of been loose ends? 